Yes, and friends, yes, media personnel. So thank you very much for this opportunity. And up front, let me apologize. I will be leaving a little early. I'll not be staying on all through the, uh, the other engagements which I was already committed to. But let me first take this opportunity to actually congratulate the NGRB and the chairman personally for, I think this is something which had been uh, pending for quite some time. Um, it was aggravated by the fact that we did not have a regular chairperson. There was a, there was a high interest, but I think as soon as uh, Mr. Ekejian has joined, what he's actually done is galvanized this whole thing. And so, and the OPA seeing is that this final bit of uh, ensuring that all citizens of the country get access to modern fuel, cleaner fuel, I think that that has been made possible. And so, again, let me compliment the entire PNGRB team and the chairperson for having made this possible. Again, I mean, I would be very happy, you know, given a choice to be in any industry where, which is growing at a CAGR of 20 or 25 percent. And how many industries can say that on a sustained basis? So clearly we are on a good thing here. We are clearly on something where people can uh, see opportunity, there is money to be made, cost to be recovered, as well as the fact that we are really doing contributing to nation building in a way which is, uh, which is going to serve us for a very, very long time. Alongside, we are meeting a very important objective of cleaning up the air, of leaving a legacy for our children, which is better. That, that is where you know, a whole lot of things come together when we talk of um, natural gas being used. <coughs> the other interesting thing is that while we are growing at 20 or 25 percent, it is almost as if the entire ecosystem is conspiring to make us grow. Now, why do I say that? You have, if you recall, CNG used to be identified in uh, vehicles with three wheelers in Delhi with CNG buses. Increasingly, it became four wheelers. Today, you know, in many markets, one out of every four vehicles is a CNG vehicle on an incremental basis as they're being sold. And now, even in the midst of all that we are doing on EVs and uh, everything else, we are still seeing two-wheeler manufacturers coming out with plans to make CNG motorcycles. So if they are, if so which means that the vehicle manufacturers also see the opportunity which you are seeing, that there is a future in this, investments are being made, and clearly there is a demand which is just waiting to be met. And therefore, this entire 12th round really is appropriately positioned to make sure that we are reaching out in these areas that we haven't done so. But having said all that, I think some, I think some caution is also warranted. We are literally going into more difficult areas than we are getting into the 12th round. They are difficult because population is less. Distances are of course larger, so yes, there is more vehicle movement. But fact is that size of villages is smaller. They are more sparsely populated. And therefore, aggregate demand centers are going to be lesser as than what we are used to, which is therefore going to require some innovations. This, this will have to be very different from what you have been used to in some of the mainland areas. But the fact is that uh, it actually is fertile ground for thinking of new ideas, for looking at ways how do we reduce costs, and making sure that we don't overbid in terms of our MWP commitments, uh, or thinking that we can get away by just paying some penalty, because this is going to be more closely monitored, more closely watched, more closely observed, because these areas tend to be areas where there's been far more tension in recent times than there has been previously. But they also represent areas where there will be leapfrogging from traditional fuels, which were coal-based or biomass-based, to something which is completely new. So we may not even be going through an LPG kind of transition. We are probably moving for many households straight from um, uh, charcoal or coal or uh, even biomass straight to very modern uh, fuels. So again, a great way to do this, a great way to think about how to dispense this, how to make it available at a lower cost. 
Now, within all this, obviously, there are going to be additional demands on natural gas. So supplies are coming, more and more supplies will be coming online. Some of the investments which we had made on the ENP side, which our producers had made many, many years ago, are now coming closer to commissioning. So more gas locally becomes available, which also means that in many ways, we should also start thinking of gas demand beyond just CNG and PNG. So rather than just focusing ourselves, because so far we, the easy part was getting into vehicles, getting into households, but the whole requirement of gas from industrial consumers, which even absent any kind of government incentives have been going almost at 18% per year, can actually increase much, much more. Because what has happened is the pipeline infrastructure, the way it has grown, and by next year or year and a half, when you're looking at 33,000 kilometers of uh, pipelines, along with the kind of connectivity which we are seeing in the Northeast, it is possible to shift many more industrial units to natural gas. So again, something which we should be doing advanced planning for is what I would request. But this is an area which, why it excites me is uh, as uh, the entire uh, natural gas and CNG space uh, work talking to PGD entities, is that we actually have a very robust mechanism for dialogue, for discussion. The industry, regulator, and government are constantly in touch. We constantly keep talking to each other, we keep getting ideas. I mean, we never, we never claim to be the repository of all wisdom, and we often get some excellent ideas through our interface. And I, I, I do wish and hope that this continues because uh, that really adds to the, that really contributes to the success of this sector. That, that's how, it, I mean, there will be problems. New problems will keep coming up. We understand that. That is the nature of the beast. But what we have seen is our track record. I think that was also a little too earlier. Our track record has been that with every problem, we have been able to collectively co-create certain solutions which have actually, um, you know, and I think the evidence of that is the kind of interest that we are seeing even in for uh, you know, at the tail end of this, uh, of this series of rounds, for the 12th round, the kind of interest, the kind of enthusiasm we are seeing actually tells us that we are probably doing something right. And uh, that is what gives me a lot of confidence, a lot of hope that uh, we are just writing the story for a gas revolution in India. And we are the early chapters. There's much more to be written here. And I'm confident that with the 12th round, we'll be moving on to really the, the, the middle of the story, not the end of it. So thank you very much, and all the best for this round.